Hello everyone. God, this is actually my third attempt at doing this video. The first one I made a few fumbles and the second one, for some strange reason, my video recording software just switched off. Anyway, so welcome again. Um, as normal, I'm wearing my lumberjack shirt, which is the important thing. I'm going to keep this as my thing for as long as I can. Uh, it's a very grubby, kind of like dank, dark, rainy day, which surprised people. I actually enjoy weather like this, but that's because I'm crazy, obviously. So let me give you, I have the preamble for this video first. Um, I've, I've I've posted on some, some of my social media accounts. I'm putting together um, what I'm calling the real industry special people. And what this is, these are people that I have investigated myself and they are good at what they do now this doesn't mean you know for the social media one i'll be interviewing zuckerberg these are people who are doing the job this is not the ceo or the md of a company because they see everything from a seventy thousand foot view these are people who are experts that are known as experts i have backtracked them and researched them and know that these are the industry people and i want to draw out of them some of their specialist knowledge and skills to help people who watch these videos it's free you know i just want to give it to the world um and also these aren't people that have you know copy pasted 30 articles and blended it into one and said it was theirs which i'm seeing a lot of at the moment these are people in it and doing it now uh people i've already managed to cover industries are recruitment uh food production industry uh online marketplaces search engine optimization uh, religions in the workplace which is, doesn't sound as quite as complicated as it is um, i've actually got a lot of hopes up for that one uh, the environment animal welfare and what i've put with that one is because the person i'm talking to is very very interesting um is that it's People are seeing now that maybe uh, charities and the third sector is just another excuse to make profit a different way. And I want to get someone from the industry's, you know, uh, point of view on this, that it's not especially important things and important areas like animal welfare, which is close to my heart. Selling techniques that trickery, uh, the building industry recruitment, uh, mixed martial arts and mixed martial arts as a business and how some of the things from there can be brought into other other industries. And. Uh, this is strange I happen to know a lot of people in the environmental industry it's not necessarily what i'm from but i've seen there are some industries in the way they work and what they're doing could actually be the savior environment without knowing it and one of them i'm talking to is someone from the lumber industry in regard to this on the table for later also i'm still talking to these people to get them on board uh, experts in blockchain more than i'm myself and we're talking the real nitty-gritty experts also an exciting one which i think everyone really must must watch this one i'm really really glad i've managed to try and persuade this person to do this video is how to use internet loopholes and company tricks to save money both for your company's operations and also your general home expenses and living. I mean, this is some quite incredible information. And I really hope to get to get out to people and many, many more. That's just a, a quick overview. Uh, also, like to say, I've been invited to speak on behalf of one of the smaller London business schools. Uh, I'm giving a speech with them for 30, 35 minutes if I can keep it down to that much. I will be posting it on here and then YouTube if I can, if they'll allow me to under the contract I'm signing with them. So today's video. Uh, people know, well, unless you're new to me, that I started in retail when I was 14 years old and during my time working way up to be a CEO of an international company and running my own companies. Uh, I've lived it throughout the EU, throughout the USA, everywhere in Asia. And whilst doing this, I've learned some quite amazing things on how different business industries and culture do what they do and it confuses me why people don't transfer them into other industries and let's say for example i've done some work with a leading think tank in the blockchain sphere and things i've learned from there you could use them to help a manufacturer of toilet paper and i'm being hyperbolic there but you get the idea and it's just that if i know these things and they operationally or sales or you know any different way they work in a business in one industry they can be used in another one <clears throat> some of them are I've learned from the consumer industry. I must admit, they can only be used there, but bits of it can be transferred. And some are very transferable. Some are customer focused, operation focused, sales focused. It's a cross section. The issue, you guessed, is that dependent on what jurisdiction you're in, some of them can be classed as black hat or not nice. And I'm being honest here, a lot of companies still use these and they're not particularly, as we say, 
conducive to them being known as a good company. Uh, I don't use them. I don't like to use them. But for this one, to give you a flavour of some of the grey matter in here, I want to explain to you one of the ones I know that could be classed as grey, but it's not. And it's just as interesting to know, I think, if you're not, you're not from the industry as I'm in. Uh, and it's to give, get it to the world an idea of what's in here. In the 1966, there was a bricks and mortar retail psychology study performed uh, based on how music affects shoppers. In short, they worked out that the louder the music was played, the more time the shopper, the more time the shopper thought they spent in store. OK, but what's the use of this? If you want to give the shopper the idea they spent a long time, obviously turn up the volume and what this helps with is if your RRP is a very high ticket product shoppers both subliminally and what I like to call their front brain want to think they've spent longer making an educated choice they don't want to part with a thousand dollars ten thousand pounds you know five hundred thousand RMB whatever it might be they don't want to part with that money until they know they've made a good choice which is based on time so if you want to give them the idea they've spent longer making that decision, turn up the volume. Once I learned this as a composer and conducting musician, I decided when I got to a senior enough level within a company and also on my own chain, I wanted to apply some of these. I wanted to play with them. Let's see what really did and did not work. And is there other things that music can do? Through trial and error and surveying customers, I worked out the speed of music was a factor also. The faster the music, again, the longer the shopper thought they were in store. I then tried it on a website because I actually owned my own pure player at the time. I added music to it. Yes, it worked. The faster the music that was playing, the shopper thought they spent longer on the website. I then took this further, knowing how music elicits feelings. I started playing key signatures and time signatures. Now, key signatures is a bit of a confusing thing to go into because there's a lot of information already out there about this. So I didn't need to go too far into it. And I'm going to be using some music terminology, but I'll help explain it on the way. The closer you are to the key of C major, the happier, more inspired people feel. The closer you are to D minor as a key, not A minor as most people would think, the sadder and even sometimes can make you feel more scared and wary. Now a key signature, I'll just call the tonal feeling of the music. I then tried, tried blending different time signatures. Now a time signature, we'll just call the pulse and the rhythm of the music. And the most standard one is 4-4. Four, four. And then I played with crotchet speed. This is the tempo, the overall speed of a piece of music. Or if you're in a using the American musical system, quarter note speed or the tempo. What I found out was if you threw in lots of triplets into a standard 4-4 four, four time, if you have a QSR or a restaurant, People may and did start to feel queasy sometimes, meaning serving food. If you're playing lots of R&B, garage, jazz or anything that uses triplets, you may inadvertently be making your covers feel sick. Also, I found out it also but didn't work. It wasn't quite as bad. It affected the, the covers if you're using what's called over dotted music. That's generally using like Big Bang and dance band music. So I'm going to use my singing voice here to give you an example. And I'm not I'm not using my real singing voice because I'm in the middle of an office and it will sound really stupid me belting out some notes. But I want to try and explain what this is. So I know you can hear this, this being your tempo. Now a triplet would be da -da 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 -da. and what's happening is I'm dragging the feeling of the tempo out, which inadvertently, especially if you're eating, can make you feel queasy and not well. I then tried some of these other things out in my own units. I have one, I had one, sorry, that was quite small square footage in a very busy area. So what I did was I increased the tempo and speed of the music during the time it got really busy. People, yes, I could tell were eating faster and an extra bonus, I could say, is the staff were working faster as well. But obviously I didn't want my consumer to feel like they were being rushed, so I turned up the volume. Yes, it worked. It came to balance the speed that people were eating. If you increase the volume, made them feel they were in store for longer. So we had a, we had a good shopper experience. Was clearing the square footage of a very small unit quite fast. As I posted before, music is one of the most underused and underrated things in general business today. It can be used for customer satisfaction, your staff stress levels, increased productivity. The areas are endless.
Anyway, I'm not going to give you my entire war chest of knowledge. This is just a brief idea so you have an idea what's in this noodle over here. If you want to know more or even want some of my expertise in-house, if it's just a general question, please email me. If you want me for something more, more, more time consuming and more business orientated, you know, I am actively looking, as I keep on saying, I'm, I'm looking for a long term permanent role or even contractual consultancy work between there. Anywhere in the world, I'm really happy at the moment for something like that. Anyway, all the best to everyone. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll be uh, sending another video out tomorrow. Bye bye.